Hello everyone and welcome to the third video of Rigging for Beginners series. Now in the first two videos we looked after the skeleton and we put together the IK handles and um, we skinned the geometry to the skeleton. Now it's time to make use of what we already have and put the controls in place so we can move the bones without having any, any transformation on the actual skeleton and bones. Now the way we work is we start with the global control. It's always a good idea to start with the a global node or the main control because you attach all of your controls that you control the object in order to reposition or resize the character through the global control. Now, um, in order to speed up the process and not for you to watch me making each every and every single control, I'm actually using a, a very simple free to use plugin. It's called Control Creator. I am going to show you where I downloaded the file. But just so you know, this is the plugin that I downloaded. It's called Control Curve um, Creator UI. It's free and made by Perry Layton. I put the link in the description below so you guys can pay a visit and download it. Now back to Maya, let's um, start with the global control. So I made a button out of that script. So every time I click on it, I basically make myself the window here and um, it really doesn't matter which one you use as long as it's sort of you know makes sense so just going to select the main global control and my might turn it to a yellow color now every time you create a control curve you need to think about what sort of naming convention you're going to use for it so you keep working with that naming convention because at the end of the day it must be straightforward to find must be easy to search and it should make sense so the way i work is i start with c t r l for controller and then i name it if it's left side or right hand side then i put l or r or if it's in the middle then um, i just name it followed by zero one so this one is global zero one Now, every time you select and create a controller, you need to think about the pivot point, what sort of pivot point you're going to give to this controller. And um, you need to think about naming convention. And most importantly, you need to phrase its transformation. It is very important to phrase its transformation because this is supposed to um, move all the joints. And if you have transformation values on it, you never be able to zero out everything and bring the character to the default position. We do have uh, videos on walk cycle and end cloth for characters. And in all of these, it's needed for the animator to bring the character back to the default pose. And if there's a value on any of these um, transformation, controllers then that's going to be a problem so we already named it let's freeze its transformation and i'm going to delete the history on it now with that global controller selected i'm going to select a skeleton and ik and i'm going to drag and drop them under global control so every time i select the global controller and scale it the entire character scales if I want to rotate, the character rotates with it. And if I move the global controller, the character follows. It is very important not to include the actual character simply because skinned is controlled by bone object objects. Let's uh, set up controller for the chest. I'm going to use a cube curve, move it up. I'm going to scale it. Now, uh, at some point, we want to set the pivot and freeze its transformation. And from that point onward, I'm just going to work with components, meaning vertices, to reshape this, this controller. So um, I'm going to hold down V and snap this controller to the chest bone. And feel free to enable local rotation axis to be even more accurate. But now when I have this done, I'm going to freeze its transformation, delete by type history, 
and let's name it ctrl underscore chest01. Now I'm going to go to component mode and I'm going to shape this so it's easier to select. All right, uh, I think that should do it. And I mean, if there is any further tweaks, I can always go back and make a change. I don't wanna to spend too much time on it. Now you can always go ahead and duplicate what you already have. And I'm gonna use another copy for um, pelvis area. So I'm just going to zoom in. Again, it's very important to be very picky about the pivot point. You don't wanna make any mistakes because that pivot point is going to drive the joint. So it needs to be 100% accurate. Now I'm gonna snap it to the pelvis and it's not chest anymore. Just gonna call this pelvis01. Letter T is missing, okay. And um, I'm just going to select it, go to its component mode and reshape it really quickly. I just need to make sure that it's easy to select. Um, if you uh, forget to color it with this script that you have, that's, um, that's no problem. You can always go to object display in the curve shape node, go into draw override and enable override. And in here you can just give it a color. I'm just gonna select the yellow for this one and select the same yellow for this one as well. So all the central um, controllers, I'm just going to give it a yellow color. Now, this one is set. There's only one thing that I should do. And that is, yes, you guessed it right, I need to freeze its transformation. Great. Now, um, it's time to use constrain in order to attach the bone to the controller. And the way that we always work and that selection order is important, we always select the driver, which is the control, and shift select the bone, That's um, which is opposite to how you parent things. So we are going to select the control, shift select the chest bone. And again, it's always a good idea to be very careful about it, how you make that adjustment i'm just going to make sure that i'm selecting the global controller and the chest bone simply go and um, in here you can actually select the controller and the chest bone um, again you have to be accurate so i usually work with the outliner um, so there's no doubt about anything and then i go to constraint and the constraint that you want to use is orient constraint I'm going to make sure maintain offset is on. So we maintain the offset between uh, the bone and the controller. And then we go add. Now if I select the controller now, you can see when I rotate the controller, the chest bone follows. We're going to do the same thing for the pelvis. Via the outliner, I'm going to select the pelvis, shift select the TNT pelvis 01, and I'm going to go to constrain orient. It's always a good idea to test, make sure things are working. Excellent, it works. And again, if you see some odd deformation and something that you don't like, you can always go back and fix the skinning. I mean, in the last session, we actually did up to 90%. Of course, there's always a remaining 10% that you can polish, but I'm not really worried about that. We know more about uh, the quality of our skinning once we uh, complete the entire uh, character control set. Now let's create a controller for the backbone. I may use, um, let's see what we have. Yeah, I'm going to use one of these crown curves here. Just going to bring it up may flatten it a little bit. So I'm just going to flatten that. And of course, I'm going to scale it down and 
apart from the design, I need to make sure its pivot is correct. So I'm going to hold down a D and V and snap it to the bone that I want to, which is the back bone. Excellent. Now, again, if you think it's too big or the size or the position is not correct, don't move it because it moves the pivot. Always go to components, select the components and change it that way. All right, I'm going to freeze its transformation. You don't want to center the pivot because we just set the pivot. But what we need to do is to name it. So CTRL back zero one. Let's go and set up the orient constraint for that as well. So we select the driver, which is back. Shift select the driven, which is JNT back zero one. And we go into constrain, orient constrain with maintain offset on. So if I rotate the back, it rotate the backbone. At the end of the day, we might go ahead and smooth these areas for the skinning a little bit. But again, as I said before, we're not worried about it that much. We can always change that. I'm just going to go ahead and change the override color to yellow. So everything looks exactly the same. Now we would like to uh, our chest control to follow the back control. So select the chest control and shift select the or control select the back control from the outliner and press the P key to parent. Now it's time to create the center of gravity control and um, that is quite an important one uh, because for center of gravity our character and you know, all the controllers will tie to center of gravity. So um, this is one of the primary controllers that we need to create. So let's um, bring our script. And I might use the crown as well. Crown controller. Just going to move it up. Approximately to this position. Yeah, sounds about right. I'm actually going to rotate it. And I'm going to give it a yellow color. Um, I want this to be easy to select. I'm just going to lower the size just a tad and probably flatten it just a little bit, not too much. Now you may ask, where do you want this to go or where do you want to place it? I want to place it at the center of the root bone, which is the pelvis as well. So just going to hold down a D and V it might actually zoom in because you don't want to make a mistake and just snap it at the center. Now the color is correct. All I need to do is to freeze its transformation. I'm going to call this CTRL center of gravity COG01, delete its history. The good thing about this script is it actually deletes the history when it creates it. But again, just to be safe, do that as well. Now the constraint we use for this one is going to be parents because we're not only oriented, but also we are going to reposition it as well. And the one to use to have orient and translate at the same time is parent. So I'm going to go to constrain. Again, we're going to select the driver here, shift select the driven, which is GN JNT root zero one. And we're going to go to parent constraint. We're going to check its option box. Maintain offset is on. Great. I'm just going to add. Now, if I rotate, center of gravity, we can see the root bone rotates. Now it's time to tie back the pelvis control to center of gravity. So we're going to select the back control, shift select the um, pelvis control, and then shift select the center of gravity control last, and we press the P key. So everything is under center of gravity in the outliner now. Now, if we 
rotate center of gravity, you can see everything rotates with it. That's great. Again, always constantly check and make sure there's no transformation values on your controller. Otherwise, you need to deassemble freeze transformation and again, relink everything back together. Now, before things get out of control, let's uh, clean up a little. So I'm going to go to CTRL, give it a typo here, CTRL, and I'm just going to press Control G on it to create a group node. And I'm just going to call this controls01. Uh, so every single control that we create goes into that control01. Now, with this control01 selected, let's go to its channel box and we're going to lock and hide translate, rotate and scale because we're never ever going to move that, rotate that or scale that. So lock and hide selected. We're just going to leave a visibility on. And of course, we don't want to leave it here. I'm just going to parented under CTRL global. So everything is under here, skeleton, IK and controls. Everything is nice and clean and easy to find. Now, again, um, a common test that I do every now and then I usually select my global controller and I just scale, make sure everything is scaled together. Everything, when you rotate the global controller, everything move with it. And if when you move it, everything moves with it. If there is an issue or if, there, if, if you have a, um, if you made a mistake along the way, then uh, the character will collapse and shrink down. Um, it just looks horrible. Also, while I'm in the cleanup phase, I'm just going to get rid of translate. It's going to lock and hide and scale lock and hide on chest control. I'm going to do the same thing for back and pelvis. So I'm going to lock and hide the translate and lock and hide the scale. I'm going to select the CTRL pelvis lock and hide translate and lock and hide scale. and save. For center of gravity, we are going to move it. That's why we use parent constraint and we are going to rotate it, but we're never going to scale it. So I'm going to select the scale, lock and hide, select it. Now it's time to set up controllers for the head and for the neck. For that, I'm going to use just a simple circle. So I'm just going to move the circle up, probably around here. And the pivot goes into the uh, JNT head. Again, uh, the shape, you can always go ahead and fix it. The whole idea is it should be easy to select. All right, good. Now let's do what we always do for all of these controllers. We delete history, we freeze transform, and we name it properly. So it's going to be CTRL underscore head zero one. The color on it is going to be yellow. I just noticed that I did not set the pivot correctly. I probably moved it somewhere. So I'm just going to make sure that it is in fact correct. And again, triple check if need be, as you can see, I failed twice. All right, that looks great. Now we are going to duplicate that curve, move it down just going to hold down D, move the pivot up somewhere close to the neck. And this is going to be the neck control. So hold down D, hold down V, middle mouse and snap it at the center of the bone. And I'm going to go to component controllers and select the verts and just scale the verts a little. I'm trying not to move the actual curve, but select its components. Yeah, that should be easy to select, I think. So I'm going to right click, go to the object mode. And of course, I need to freeze transformation. And I need to rename it to CTRL neck 01. Delete by type history as well. That's good. Now select our head control and have that parented to the neck control. So select the child, select the parent and press the P key. So head is under the neck. I'm just going to use lowercase 
for the neck as well. And I'm going to control head um, and I'm going to select the rotation order to ZXY for both of them. We want to use ZXY rotation order for um, this and for the back and all the other controllers. I'm going to do this for chest as well. Excellent. So select the head control, shift select the head bone. As you can see, I always want to confirm it from the outliner, make sure I'm selecting the right controller and go to constrain and orient constrain with maintain offset on. So if I select the head control and rotate it, it just rotates correctly. I'm going to do the same thing for the neck. I'm going to select the driver, shift select the driven, which is the neck control. I'm going to go to constrain, orient constraint. Again, neck is one of the primary controllers and very, very important. And of course, we don't want to have scale and translate available on these controllers. So I'm going to go and lock and hide them. Lock and hide. And I'm going to go to neck, do the same thing. Right click, lock and hide. Now it's time to look after our clavicle controls. Now I'm going to go to my creative controls menu set. There should be one for rotation. So rotate control, click on it. So with that control selected, I'm going to hold down D and V and snap it to clavicle. Again, it's always a good idea to double check, make sure it's correct. Probably I need to slide this controller back so it sits exactly on top of clavicle. Looks good. I'm going to freeze its transformation and delete by type history. And I'm going to name it CTRL underscore L underscore clavicle. Of course, there's a zero one at the end. Now to mirror this guy to the other side, there's a trick that I always use. I select the control and then I press control D and then I press control G. So it kind of groups it in the middle. And then I'm going to make this scale X minus one. Once that's done, I'm going to select the controller and then press shift P on it and delete the group node. Try this a couple of times until you get the hang of it. It's actually very, very useful. If I select the right hand side controller, voila, we actually have the pivot point exactly at the right place. I'm going to rename it CRTL R clavicle zero one. Just need to tra freeze its transformation. And I'm going to make sure transformation is been zeroed out on the left hand side as well. Now it is optional how you now to color them. I'm actually going to use this guy. So I'm going to give the right hand side or left for the character red and right hand side for the character blue. Now it's time to set up constraints for the clavicle. So I'm just going to, oops, I'm just going to move in, select the driver and shift select the clavicle control, which is the driven. And I'm going to go to constrain. I'm going to do an orient constraint with maintain offset on. I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Press G to repeat the last two. And to clean up, I'm going to go to channel box and lock and hide its translate and scale. Lock and hide selected. I'm going to do this for the left hand side as well. Lock and hide. 
Now we don't want them to just be in the root of our scene. We need to parent them to the chess control. So with these two selected, as a child, we're gonna shift select the parent and press the P key. So they're gonna just nicely snap to the chess control. As for the neck and head, we are going to do the same thing. I'm gonna select the neck control, shift select the chess control and press P. So everything is nice and clean inside the controls a group node. Now we have successfully put in place our primary controls. In the next video, we're gonna go ahead and finish the process by adding your secondary controls.